أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أبو القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah, we come together to commemorate these nights. And they are very special. They're alive. They transcend time. They echo through time. They're alive. How are they alive? One needs to ask that. You really need to ask that question. How is this night alive? Because it's, li it's alive with principle. Principle doesn't change. It doesn't. So when your principles can transcend and echo time, that means you've signed time at a certain place. There's a signature. And the martyrdom of Imam Hussein was a signature. Because if it wasn't for Imam Hussein's death at that time, we wouldn't have the same understanding in terms of the moral code that we own now. And you have to understand that. That he signed history with his blood. That's not easy. That's not light. You have to understand that. You have to understand the sacrifice of what happened in that time. And you have to download that moral code that he has given us that is still alive now. Principles do not change. That's the difference. And that is a thought that you have to take in and see where you're at. Now yesterday, we talked about what happens when you build a belief structure? I'm going to reiterate just a little bit, then I'm going to go into the presentation. Yesterday, what we talked about is this. We went in and we saw what would happen when you build a belief structure. And we talked about what was your first job. We mentioned that it was when you came out of your mother's womb. You cried. That was your first job. Then you found milk. That was your second job. Then after that, you learn how to crawl, walk, and responsibility gets heavier and heavier. We kind of tag that. And now you understand that every stage of your life, responsibility is going to increase. So if you don't build the right belief structure underneath it, in terms of that responsibility when it comes to your door, your belief structure is going to collapse. And you will not be able to stand when the Imam calls. You may say you're going to do it, but your heart's not going to follow. It's different. You've got to understand that. That once you build that belief structure and it's sound, when you are called, you're ready to go. You don't hesitate. So we talked about how to formulate that and what happens. We went into principle. What happens when you have to build principle? How is principle built? At the end of the day, the Quran it's a software you have to download. It's incredible. You download that system. You make that habitual in your subconscious mind that you don't even have to think when you are speaking. When the situation happens, the Quranic verses come to you. They create the lens of awareness that you're looking through. And now you apply onto the world what you own. Watch what happens to your character when that happens. That's incredible. You become a different human being. Think of the Prophet The Prophet owned the Qur'an in his heart. That's ownership. 
that creates a different lens that you look at the world through. And when that happens, imagine his default system when he speaks, what he's aware of when you download the right software. And guess what? It never ages. It doesn't need updating. It doesn't need for you to scan for viruses. No, everything is intact. It's incredible. What you own is incredible. And I swear you, please pay attention to this. I speak at different levels, different conferences. 99% non-Muslims. Every time, most of the time, I'm not going to say every time, because I don't know. When I say a Quran or a Hadith, you know what happens? Everyone is writing. SubhanAllah. Do we understand what we own? Someone's never heard the words, but when they hear it for the first time, they write it down. And I watch it every time. And I'm amazed. I was in front of 40 executives. I started the whole presentation with a hadith about Imam Ali. And you watch them write. This is your Imam. Do you give him the value that we should? Or we just take it for granted? I'm a Shia. Hmm. Good for you. Is this a Shia? Is this a follower? Is this engaged? Is it alive? Or what? Khatam Allah ala qulubihim wa ala samanihim my God, you don't want to be in that state. So we talked about principle and how principles form. How does a principle form? It's when a thought is infused in emotion. A thought, you take a thought and you infuse it in emotion. That creates a principle. I'll give you an example. Someone comes into your house. And mashallah, some of you. And he's what? He's beating up your mother. What happens to you as a person? Do you think to yourself, this guy's about maybe 5'8", five, 5'9", five, he's about maybe 180 pounds, I think I can take him? Or you just react, why? Because there's so emo much emotion tagged to the principle of protection towards your mom. You don't even think about it. The principle's intact, you don't have to think, you just react. You respond to the situation. That's how principles work. So when you download the principle, you connect it to emotion, that becomes you, good or bad. That's the key. He's either thankful or he rejects. It's up to you. We said the heart yesterday, rejects and accepts. It does both. You cannot even control that sometimes. And it flips on you. So on that level, please understand. Tonight, what we're gonna go through is this. Now, when you download the principle and you have it intact, there's a gray area around your principle. And I really want you to pay attention to this and how this works. And this, you're gonna see what happens when you get moved step by step by step. You move, get moved away step by step by step and you become desensitized. Our youth are going through this right now. The most dangerous times are with our youth right now. This center should be filled with them. They should be here. We're not doing that good of a job. I'm not saying you guys are not doing that. I'm saying myself even. I'm talking to myself first. We need them here. I've seen so many jump into the river of life, never come back out. It's so difficult because their temptations 
are so strong. They're all around them. This thing, my God, what has done. It's incredible. Let me show you how principles work even with this thing. What happens when you first wake up? What happens when you're about to leave your house and you forget your phone? How many internal emotional alarms are connected to this thing? How many? Forget your phone. 10 minutes, you'll, you, you have anxiety. Did you do that? Or did they program you? This is a social standard now. You can't live without this thing. You can't. Try. You can't. You can't survive. They set it within the social structure where everything is almost dependent on it. Even your heart now is dependent on this thing. That's how far it's gone. And especially even with the youth. So now, that desensitization factor, how does it happen? We also said yesterday that when you go against your principle, what happens? That's where we ended. I'm going to take it further now. Here's what happens when you go against your principle. Let's say now you've downloaded the software and you own this principle. One side is great, but what happens when you go against it? What does it generate? We're going to go to the emotional factors and we're going to see how it happens. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So now, when you own the principle of Salah, wow, and you see your Imam stand in Karbala, and he's looking at the sun, is it time to pray? In the middle of battle, no excuse, no excuse. Don't give yourself any excuses. Don't rationalize to yourself. That's what we talked about yesterday. When our principles are intact, we don't rationalize. We accept who we are. And now, here's what happens when you go against your principle, meaning your actions go against your principles. I believe in something, but my behavior does something else. The result of that equation is guilt. It generates the feeling of guilt. supposed to pray and I didn't pray that day at the end of the day if you have the principle intact it should generate guilt you should feel that it should weigh on your shoulders something is wrong I don't feel right that should tell you that you have the principle if it generates the guilt you know you have the principle bottom line if it doesn't generate the guilt You've been de desensitized. Your heart is dying. Bottom line. So now, we said you have two ways of removing the guilt. First way is we rationalize. And we lie to ourselves. And we tell ourselves what? Okay, nothing wrong. Someone I was cheating on an exam. I believe I shouldn't cheat. What do I do? I lie to myself. And I say, you know what? Everybody else was cheating. It's okay. I give excuses to myself. I rationalize. I'm going towards self-sabotage when I do that. That's exactly what I'm doing. How do you go towards self-development and also remove the guilt? This is crucial. Please pay attention to this. This is how your heart becomes alive. It doesn't die. The other way, you're literally, it's like you're taking it and if it needs water, you're not watering it with the right things. You're not developing your heart, your emotional structure in terms of where you need to take it. When you lie to yourself and you rationalize and you give yourself excuses. And we said yesterday, Surely, man is a witness against himself. And on that day, he will be putting forth his what? Excuses. Even in front of Allah, you're going to be putting forth your excuses. Now, please pay attention to this because this is what will give you. 
it will give you this result. Now, when you actually go towards the dua or the Quran to resolve your issues, let's say you get hit by life and you don't like who you are, you have to learn this. Go towards that. Why? Because you're going to generate a certain emotion that's going to keep your heart soft. And Imam Ali shows you how to do it. And we said this yesterday. He says what? In Dua Kumail, he says, I have come to you, Ya Allah. I'm admitting my mistake. He even gets to a point, he says, I'm broken. I'm broken. Fix me, help me. The result of that is you're massaging your heart to do what? This is the concept. Take this with you. You are beginning to believe in Allah's mercy. The heart touches mercy of Allah. Your heart stays soft. Your tear that runs down your cheek is warm. It's not cold, completely different. Your heart is alive. It's connected to the right thing. I'm not rationalizing and lying to myself and saying, you know what? I'm okay. No, I need work. I need to go here. That also removes the guilt. Two ways. You can lie to yourself to remove the guilt or you can want admit your mistake and take accountability for who you are. This will lead to what? Self-development. Because you'll realize that I need work and I need to grow at a different level. So now, two choices. Watch what happens when you understand the next concept connected to this. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So now, we understand how we work at that level. We understand that we should go towards what? Self-development. Stay truthful with who? Myself first. I have to sell my self-honesty first. Think about that. Now, what happens if we do this right and we start believing in Allah's mercy? Watch what happens, because you're gonna need this down the line. You're gonna need the Quran. When you download that system, it will come to your aid when you're at your worst. But if you turn on the radio versus the Quran, watch what will happen to you when you're in need. Watch. Now, this is how it works and how you get moved away. Let's say your principle's intact. This is how you get moved away from a principle. In the Quran, it says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, la tattabi'u khutuwaat al-shaytan, innahu lakum aduun mubeen. Surely, O oh you who believe, do not follow the footsteps of who? Shaytan. Why does it say footsteps? Watch. Surely he's an arch enemy for you. Alama taba taba'i says, if there's steps, it means there's a road. You're on a journey. You're on a journey. You're walking a path. And he's going to put obstacles in your way. That's how it works. So now, watch how you get moved across without even noticing. You have a principle. Understand the gray area around the principle. So let's say you get a text. And it's something you shouldn't do. Does it generate enough guilt for you to say to yourself, no? Or, some things don't generate enough guilt. And please pay attention to this. Watch what happens. Around your principle, there's a gray area that doesn't generate enough guilt. Outside that area, it generates too much guilt. Watch through a psychological studies how they prove this. But look, we already have the Quran. Science is catching up to what? What we have. But again, do we read, contemplate? We need to do that at a greater level. Now what happens? Here's the study. 
they take that, they tell you, you have to solve some math problems within a five minute span. For every math problem, you get 50 cents. They give you five minutes. After that, you go up, you give the representative your paper, he or she checks it, they give you compensation. On the average, they find, they find within five minutes, people have solved four problems, on average. Second step of the experiment. You go to the back, shred your paper, go to the front, tell the experimenter how much you got right. What do you think happened? It went up to six. You got one dollar more. Think of Now watch this. This is what's genius about the experiment. This is how the shaitan works on this thing. Step by step by step. Watch. Then they took the study again. Third level, you go to the back, shred your paper, go to a fr the front, to a basket, no experimenter, no representation. And guess what? They up the ante to $10 per right answer. And you get to pick the money out of a basket. What do you think happened? The numbers dropped. Everybody wants money. How does a number like that drop? How? You're free to do what you want. But understand, to take $60 generates too much what? Guilt. If you take $1, it's not gonna generate enough guilt. That's the gray zone. You see that? That's how it works. It's always the first step that you take that desensitizes you. And you take one dollar today, you're gonna take a million dollars, what, in 10 years. That's how it works. You get moved, what, step by step by step. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu la tattabi'u khutuwatu shaytan. Khutuwat, steps. First thing, you turn on the radio. Second thing, I'm going to the club. Third thing, alcohol's there. Fourth thing, and the heart is what? Dying. It's dying. It's becoming a slave to temptation. And you're building that heart. You're constructing those emotions and now, you think when the Imam comes back, you think with that heart, you're going to be able to stand in his corner? Good luck. It's not going to happen. You may think it. And your mind wants to go to him. But your heart is moving back. You're torn. Because you haven't downloaded the right one. Principle. You have to get your heart intact. And when that happens, Watch this. Beautiful story we have in Karbala. And I'm going to take you to Imam Sajjad salam, in these nights as well. And where he stood. And he walked up where? On the pulpit. He says to Yazid, he said, let me go on these sticks. Because there's no respect for that mambar. Subhanallah. Look at the power of articulation. Your tongue should be like a sword when it comes down to the religion and you stand and you rise, you have to. There's no chance. Your neck is on the line, but it doesn't matter. My heart is what? Intact. And yesterday we said what? That there's another Karbala in front of Yazid. Don't think you're gonna be able to stop a man like that with that kind of character. When that is downloaded into your system, the heart is alive and it's not scared. That he says to Yazid, what? 
says he's, Allah has given us six things. One of them is courage. That you can stand in the storm of fear and you find the eye of the storm and you have the calmness in your heart. That is incredible. That's the heart you want. So when you get called, the heart gravitates. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. It doesn't matter. Do you have that kind of heart? Do you own that? Really check yourself at the end of the day. See where you belong. See where you're at. Is your tongue with Imam Hussein, but are your actions with Yazid? Take accountability. The Prophet says, account for yourself before you get accounted for. It's incredible. Imam Ali says, he says, why are you heedless of the one that's not heedless of you, namely death? Why? Why do you turn a blind eye? So now, think of this story and watch this combination. Think why I love this story because it reminds me of me and when I'm going back and forth in life and my heart is switching. One day I'm good, the next day I don't know. I don't know what's happening and I may falter. Where's my heart? And imagine on that second that you're doing the wrong thing and medical mode appears right in front of you. Man. That's not where you want to be. Because if you have a heart that flips, the last action you take may be the worst decision you ever make because your soul is on the line. Be scared. And wherever I go, I set this challenge for everybody. I don't know if you guys have basements, but find a very dark place. And if you're a youth, I ask your parents to allow you to do this. This is your challenge. Set your alarm clock for two o'clock in the morning. For something good. Set it and go from there and wake up. And if you hit the snooze button about 10 times, it's okay. Keep hitting the snooze until you wake up. And wake up. Get to the edge of the stairway and don't turn on the lights and look into that hole. Look down into that darkness. You wanna see your brain go crazy? Watch. This side of the brain collects information. It's grandeur. It sets up models of information. This side has already what? Downloaded information. This side, when it's dealing with new information, the frontal cortex goes crazy. It lights up. Why? Emotion and imagination. You wanna freak yourself out? Watch this. You hear something in a room? Open the door a little bit. Turn off the lights in the room and put your hand in there, around the door. Watch this side of your brain go crazy. Why? Emotion and imagination. That's how it works. It's trying to figure out models of coming information. That's how it works. Then it taps into the left side of the brain saying, is this real? Is this true? It takes the information and it applies it to already downloaded information. So now go to that side of you. Look at that, what? Basement. Stand there for a second, and you're by yourself. Can you take the first step down? What happens to your heart? Check yourself. This is a test for you. Are you afraid? Check your own emotions and see what happens. Take another step down, see what happens. I'm, so, I'm telling you, some of us will be terrified Get halfway, and hopefully you don't run back up. And you want to be really, really get your mind going? Watch a scary movie before you do that. Wow. 
It's incredible what happens to the imagination and what happens to your emotional structure. Can you find security in a state of fear? That's how you know who you are. If you can find security in a state of fear, Ya ayyuha nafsul mutma'inna, rija'i ila rabbiki, radiyatin mardiyya. Wow, it's incredible that Imam Ali alayhi salam walks towards the mosque. He knows he's going to get martyred. He knows it, but his heart is sound. It's soft. It's secure. Iman, the root word is amana, security. Do you have that security? When you face a situation of fear, that you can walk towards death willingly. That is not easy. And you're stroking your beard every day, saying, is this the day? Is this the day where this will cover this with blood? You're willingly ready to go. This world is like a cage for you. It's caged your heart that you can't stand it. I don't want to be here. Not because I don't want the world, no. Because I long for what? To meet my Lord. That, I swear to you, my heart just moves when I think of a man like that. That's the character I want to possess. I don't want anybody else as a role model. And we take role models, we do, but the wrong ones. You don't want to end up in the wrong place. You don't, and don't feel secure. Check your heart constantly. When you get to the bottom of the stairs, hopefully you can make it. Sit there for a second and look around. Just look around, just for a little bit. And again, check your heart. See what happens. And if you can make it, then pull out your prayer mat and pray to your God. I swear to you, your mind is gone. Is the jinn here? Oh my God, I heard a noise. You hear the cracking of the house? Your mind will play with you. And then if you can get done, sit for a little bit and contemplate. It's the best place to be. That's how you train the heart. Now, watch this. Horror diverts Imam Hussein. Imagine having that responsibility on your shoulders. Imagine that. When we commit sin, which is what? The des desensitization of your heart. It's your being moved, what? Step by step by step. And you're being pulled away from what? That sirat al-mustaqim. You're being pulled away. Har found himself where? On the other side. It's not easy to stand in the corner of Imam Hussein. Don't think it's easy without having the right set of principles. Don't think it's easy. It, it's not gonna just happen. If you don't work on yourself every single day and every single decision that you make, don't think you're just gonna arrive. It's not gonna happen. So now, as you're being pulled away, step by step by step, he gets to a point where he has to make a decision. One of his companions of Hur looks at him and he said, if I were to say that there's a warrior on this land who is at the highest level of valor, I wouldn't hesitate to say it was you. He had capability, he was a warrior. But look at where he's at. Let's go through his mind, watch this. He answers, and he says to him, what? I'm contemplating between heaven and hell. What a decision. What a decision. The Imam Ali salam says this. He's talking about one of his companions in Nashr Balagha, and he says, وَكَانَ إِذَا بَدَهَهُ أَمْرَيْنِ We were talking about this earlier. وَكَانَ إِذَا بَدَهَهُ أَمْرَيْنِ 
ينظر أيهما أقرب إلى الهوى ويخالفه. He says he looks when he is confronted with a decision with two options. He looks at which one is closer to desire and he goes against it. Har is in that state. Mentally, he's shifting back and forth, back and forth. And now, I really want you to think about this point. Please, just pay attention. Watch. Remember, the first step is the hardest step. Once you take the first step, that's it. You're moving away from the road. The first step is the hardest step. Once you take it, that's it. You begin the desensitization. That's what happens. Har has to kick his horse two inches. His feet have to move two inches. I want you to think of that distance and how hard it is just to make that decision. One decision. One small decision to move your feet, to move your feet two inches. Really think about that. But what does Har have to believe in first? Does he have enough guilt? You see that? That should take you full circle. You should just understand what just happened. If you have the principle intact, it means he had it. He had the principle and the guilt was too much. He couldn't stand the side he was on because Imam Hussein was on the other side and he was calling. Is there anyone that will come to our aid? How many people answer? You think it's easy? How many people answer? So now, Har has to believe what? In Allah's mercy. That's the first thing. I can still be forgiven. The guilt, remember when we worked on ourselves earlier? If you go towards the music, these kinds of things, when you need that, go ahead and turn on Kiki. People are dying. Like they're literally dying because of a song. Who turns on a car, lets it go, and dances with the music? What's going on with this thing? Like literally. And you see them get hit by cars. And our youth are indulging in this. It's happening. Whether you like it or not, it's happening. Social media has taken over the world. Tentacles are in your house, whether you like it or not. So from there, if you train your heart that way, guess what's gonna happen? It's not gonna come to your aid, and you have 30,000 people on one side. Only what? A few went across. My God, think about that. So now he had to believe in Allah's mercy. Why? Because the heart was trained. I can still go back. Imagine he diverted Imam Hussein. He diverted him. He has that responsibility on his shoulders. Imagine when we commit sin and we move away from the road. How hard is it for you to say, Ya Allah? How hard? How hard? It becomes very difficult. He's not going to forgive me because the heart is not trained. You have to believe in Allah's mercy. You can go back to the road. So now what happens? Har kicks his horse. What a decision. What a decision. Could you just imagine that? When he's riding across, think of that moment when you are about to do something wrong. Can you do that? Can you discipline your emotions and tell that temptation, no? Can you do that? Can you make these kinds of decisions when you're on the line and your neck is on the line? But he was making a decision with his soul. But if he wasn't trained enough and he didn't make the small little micro behavioral decisions to get himself to that level, 
there's no way the heart would be alive enough to make that kind of decision. It's the training of the heart. So imagine the freedom when he's riding. Imagine what happens. He's free. He gets in front of Imam Hussein, and now he's in front of the man that he diverted. Think of the guilt that you face. If your heart is not soft and you don't know how to forgive yourself, understand, it's going to be very difficult. You're not going to be able to do it. So please, soften your heart. Soften it. Get on your prayer mat. The longest distance sometimes when the adhan goes off is between your living room and the place you pray. It's the longest distance. Why? Because the heart is not engaged. And think of this moment that the Imam says this, Imam Ali. He says, Rik'atun fi dunyakum ahabbuli min al jannati wa ma fiha. He says, one rik'ah, please pay attention. This is the heart of your Imam. He says, one rik'ah in this world is more pleasurable for me than what is in heaven and whatever's in it. Heaven and whatever's in it. Emotions that sit here in this world are higher than the emotions that you will feel in heaven. Why? Because here there's ibadah. Wow. The heart is connected. It's connected to the right things. And when you own that kind of heart, I want to, literally, I will literally follow you. If you have that kind of heart, I will follow you. That's not easy. He gets off his horse. He's face to face. The first thing he asks the imam, he says, do I still have time to be forgiven? Wow. If you don't train your heart and admit to yourself your own mistakes, when kasiyan, I'm broken, ya Allah. If you don't train your heart to do these things, you will never truly believe in Allah's mercy. That when you need it, your heart comes alive and I can still be forgiven. And the Imam says to him, of course. Hawr comes, he goes into battle, is martyred, rises to the highest level of heaven. Before he's about to go, Imam Hussein says to him, he says, your name is befitting of you. Your mother has named you Hawr. And Hawr means free. Are you free? Is your heart free? Is it disconnected from the wrong things? And is it attached to the right things? Check yourself. Go into that basement tonight and see. Check your heart. Where does it vibrate? When the adhan goes off, is it longing to be in sujood? Or am I playing video games? And that's more pleasurable to me. Check it constantly. Wake it up constantly injected with the dhikr of Allah constantly. Surely, with the remembrance of Allah, the heart becomes tranquil. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad.